Our third set features one of the most popular tunes of the late Renaissance in its various guises. The tune La Monica was first associated with a poem, Madre non mi far monaca, expressing the wish of a young girl not to be sent by her mother to a convent. But by the end of the 16th century, it had become a vehicle both for religious and secular poetry, as well as instrumental composition, improvisation, and dance. The young girl in the song complains that nuns have to spend their time constantly singing at Vespers and at Mass. To set the scene, we present the liturgical canticle sung at Vespers, the Song of Mary, or the Magnificat, with its associated antiphon, which is a short Gregorian chant celebrating the common of virgins. A setting of the Magnificat is printed by Girolamo di Ruta in his book, Il Transovano, a manual for church organists, a copy of which is in the Beinecke collection. De Ruta explains the practice of alternating sung verses with instrumental uh, verses played on the organ, as you'll hear in this setting of the, in, in the first church mode. After the Magnificat, the song uh, Madre non mi far monaca uh, gives our young protagonist the chance to express their fervent desire not to get themselves to a nunnery. And it's in a four part arrangement, which I derived from the 1610 version of the melody. This is followed by a marvelous sonata inspired by the tune published in Venice in 1617, composed by violin virtuoso Biagio Marini. Set for two violins in Viola de Gamba, Marini inserts a recurring ritonello or refrain between sections rhapsodizing more upon the monica's uh, poignant harmonies and bass line than its actual tune. The Monica tune though is front and center in the first dance described in Fabrizio Caroso's dance manual, Nobiltà di Dame, published in Venice in 1600. A reworking of his earlier Il Ballerino, which was published in 1581 and which is in the Beinecke collection. Nobiltà di Dame was in turn reprinted later as Raccolte di Vari Balli, uh, published in Rome in 1630, which is also in the Beinecke Beinecke collection. Fabrizio Caroso was a well-known dancing master who traveled between Northern Italian courts, teaching dances and proper dancing etiquette to young courtiers, as well as choreographing courtly entertainments. In his dance manuals, he gives not only the steps for his dances, but also includes the music for each. The dance he calls Celeste Giglio, or Heavenly Lily, is none other than the Monica Melody presented first as a sort of pavana, which is a stately double time dance, followed by a gagliarda, an energetic uh, dance featuring leaps and fancy footwork. Then a corrente, a quick triple time dance, and a Spanish canario. The rather intricate steps for each section are described in some detail by Caroso. For example, the gentleman and lady stand opposite each other without holding hands, and gracefully make a reverenza longa together in four beats of music, as the tune will show you. With two continenze breve in two beats each, the first beginning with the left foot, the second with the right, then taking right hands, do one passo trangato with your left foot, and then with the same do it zoppetto, raising your right foot, a quick passo in aria with the left foot, and then a cadenza. We present the first two sections of Celeste Giglio in a four-part setting, which I derived from the intabulated lute part in Caroza's print. <laughs> 